Hello and welcome, James Preston with you on Kalkine TV, live from Sydney, and this is the Stocks in Action Show. Let's have a look at the ASX 200 and the ASX listed stocks that are trending today. The S&P ASX 200 is up today, gaining 33.8 points or 0.47% to 7,251.6 and setting a new 100-day high. The top performing stocks in this index are Wally, up 7.77%. And IOOF Holdings up 6.39%. Over the last five days, the index has gained 2.21% and is currently 0.41% off its 52 week high. 10 of 11 sectors are higher along with the SP ASX 200 index. Energy is the best performing sector, gaining 2.75% and 8.4% for the past five days. On that note, let us have a look at a few key global and domestic developments. Australia's trade balance and retail sales have both risen during April. Retail sales rose 1.1% in April, directly in line with economic forecasts. Retail sales were expected to be unchanged from the preliminary figure of 1.1% and retail sales rose 25% compared with April 2020. In March it rose 1.3% and the national trade balance climbed to $8.03 billion in April, slightly below consensus expectations. The trade balance was expected to rise to $8.2 billion. Last month, it was at $5.57 billion. Investors appeared to play it safe amid mixed cues from the economy and rising oil prices, which may further aggravate the inflationary pressures. They were also waiting for the latest employment data from the Labor Department sometime this week, so far, the labour market has been making good progress on the back of vaccination drives and the removal of business restrictions. On June 1, the department announced a grant of US $52 million for homeless veterans to help them rejoin work. The US Treasury Department also on Wednesday renewed calls for a global consensus on a minimum corporate tax regime for companies that profit from foreign operations. The UX has sought support from countries in its push for a minimum 15% corporate tax. It stressed that governments lose out on important revenues because of cheap tax and regimes in some countries. Meanwhile, the Biden administration has warned a group of six countries, including the UK, Italy and India, which plan to levy digital services taxes on American tech companies such as Facebook and Google, will face potential ramifications. The Biden's administration said that it may have to introduce new tariffs on imports from those countries. Never a dull moment in US politics and there's also plenty happening in the commodity space. We'll check it all out in just a moment on Kalkine TV. Stay with us while we have a short break. Kalkine TV will take you to the heart of the Australian equity market. We'll bring you breakthrough stories that highlight volatility as well as tailwinds building across the length and breadth of markets. Whether space travel will gain momentum while economies may gradually open amid vaccine rollouts, our experts will share their timely inputs. So join us on this exciting journey of live streaming, financial and stock market news. Kalkine TV. Thanks for sticking with us on Kalkine TV. I'm James Preston and this is the Stocks in Action Show. It's time to take a look at the commodity space. Well, delving into the commodity space and Australia's energy stocks AXJ gained as much as 2.9% to hit a seven-week high on Thursday. Including the session's gains, the sub-index has added 6.7% week-to-date and is on track for its best performance since November 2020. Oil prices have hit their highest in more than one year to settle at US $71.25 a barrel overnight as investors took heart from producer club OPEC Plus sticking to its plan to ease supply cuts gradually. Crude has been gaining ground this week in hopes that the summer driving season in the United States would buoy demand. Wally, which provides services to oil firms, jumped 5.7% to be the top gainer in the sub-index and the benchmark AXJO. Fuel refiner Ampol Limited climbed 3.4% and Pier Viva Energy Group gained 2%. 
Index majors, Oil Search Limited and Woodside Petroleum both gained around 2.7%. Oil Search Limited and Woodside Petroleum are on track to rise for the third day in line with AxJ's gains. The British multinational mining company Anglo American has decided to restart its northern Queensland underground Moorinbar North Coal Mine. The miner has removed its workforce from the mine due to an elevated gas rating on February 20, 2021, creating a potential threat to workers' safety. The development activities at the company's Grosenbar mine, located nearby to the Moranbar mine, were also started this week. The underground operations at the Grosenbar mine were shut down due to an explosion in May 2020 that injured five workers at the mining site. The miner also pledged to improve the HSE condition of the mine for workers by incorporating automation and remote working operations. Both the mines account for almost half of the company's coal output in 2019. Well, on that note, let's have a look at some major news from the ASX listed companies from across various sectors. Firstly, financial research firm Jefferies is upbeat on Wally's push into sustainability sectors and sees improving cyclical indicators for the engineering services provider. According to the Refinitiv data, the brokerage has raised the stock's price target from $12.01 to $12.04 and has rated it a buy option. It added that opportunities in sustainability pathways like decarbonisation and environmental projects is expected to build up to trillions of dollars per annum over the coming decades. Jeffrey stated that sustainability type contracts currently account for around 45% of Worley's adjusted sales pipeline, the vast majority of which are the group's existing customer base. This pivot makes perfect sense. The brokerage also commented on the company's forecast that the second half of the fiscal 2021 year would be better than the first half, suggesting that key markets are past their trough. Five of 11 analysts rate the stock buy or higher, four say hold and two are offering the sell option. Their median PT is around $11.7 Australian as per the Refinitiv data. Helix Resources is also in the news, but just before we take a look at why, it's time for take a short break on Calkine TV. New Zealand is unique, and Calkine TV is here to bring you all the latest news and trending market updates. Streaming across multiple platforms, so no matter where you are, whether it be at the beach or on the farm, you can count on the team here at Kalkine TV to be your home for accessing the latest valuable insights into global issues that are affecting New Zealanders. Subscribe to our channels across YouTube, Facebook, also visit kalkine.co.nz. Thanks for sticking with us here on Cowkind TV. James Preston with you, and it's great to have your company for these stocks in action. Let's move on to Helix Resources. They've announced that downhole electromagnetic surveys in all three diamond drill holes have recently been finished, and that drilling has confirmed potential high-grade massive copper sulphide targets comprising discrete steeply plunging chutes. Also, surface moving loop electromagnetic surveys are currently in progress to refine the airborne electromagnetic anomalies. Meanwhile, this ASX-listed stock is in the news today. Telix Pharmaceuticals announced that it has entered into a co-promotion agreement in the United States with Berlin-based Eckert and Ziegler Strahlen und Medizi Mechik for the combination of EZAG's Gallia Farm Gallium 68 generator and Telix's investigational prostate cancer imaging product Elusix. As per the agreement, Telix and EZAG will expand their existing collaboration to further develop access to GA68 supply in the United States. The parties will co-promote Elusix and Gallia Farm to ensure healthcare providers nationwide have secure access to Elusix and GA68 generators. Moving on to the next news and shares of Hawkstone Mining soared as much as 32.1% 
to Australian $0.0337, their biggest intraday percentage gain since March 24, 2021. The lithium and gold explorer informed investors that the company will spin out its gold and gold copper projects in the US to form a separate listed company, namely Diablo Resources Limited. Hawkstone also stated that it will now be dedicated as a lithium company with its focus on the Big Sandy Lithium Project in Arizona. As part of the spin-out, Hawkstone will receive 40 million vendor shares. The company also provided a major announcement that it would change its name in general to Arizona Lithium Limited. More than 42 million shares got traded as compared to the 30-day average volume of 8.7 million shares, a massive increase. Well, just before we wrap up, there's also news in the world of technology, and we'll explore that space in just a moment on Kalkine TV. Please stay with us for a short break. Crypto talk by Kalkine. The crypto market has been red hot given the Bitcoin rally since the past year. And now the most famous cryptocurrency has got competitors, Dogecoin and Ethereum. If the crypto market excites you, tune in with me, Sage, to know the latest developments about the existing digital currencies and the new ones that are joining the race. I'll help you understand the opportunities and the risks the crypto market has in store for you. For all the digital currency related developments, Continue watching Crypto Talk by Calcine. Hello, great to have your company on Calcine TV. I'm James Preston and this is the Stocks in Action show live from our studios in Sydney. Well, this ASX listed stock is in the news today. Synata Therapeutics have struck a worldwide exclusive license deal with TechSite for TechSite's wound dressing technology. As per the ASX announcement, TechSite's technology will be used in Synata's planned clinical trial in diabetic foot ulcers. Preclinical research and studies using TechSite's dressing to apply Cimerus MSCs to the wound have showed positive outcomes. Synata now plans to undertake a clinical trial of its Cimerus MSC product in patients utilising the TechSite technology. From health tech to mining, and Matador Mining has increased its holding to 37% after a significant strategic review around its Cape Ray Gold project and other prospective gold regions across Newfoundland in North America, namely Canada. Two blocks adjacent to the Cape Ray Gold project area have been acquired. These were identified via a comprehensive targeted review of the con con contiguous regions within tenements, including the Hermitage project to the east of, of Cape Ray Gold project. A review of historical work is now underway. And lastly, MMA Offshore is in the news today after it provided an update on recent contract awards and its asset sales program progress. The contract itself contains a number of highlights, including MMA Offshore being awarded two significant long-term vessel contracts for offshore wind support in Taiwan and from the Australian Department of Defence. It's also secured contracts with OMV New Zealand and INPX for the Itchthes field in Australia's northwest. The combined value of the contracts is 44 million Australian dollars. As for the asset sales update, that also contains a number of highlights. MMA Offshore recently completed the sale of three ships for a total of around $5 million. Sales value have been in line with the assets held for sales value on the company's balance sheet. In addition, proceeds from the asset sales will be used to pay down further debt, which will further delever the balance sheet. Well, it's safe to say that MMA will not be saying you sunk my battleship anytime soon. Well, that's it for the Stocks in Action show. Hope you enjoyed the program. Stay with us here on Kalkine TV, though, for more live market updates. We'll be back with more news on markets, economy and diverse themes and sectors in just a short moment. I'm James Preston for Kalkine TV.